years ago, setting out some of my complaints, I got a beautiful uh, acknowledgement of receipt. Uh, thank you uh, to the judge. But nothing happened thereafter. For three years, I raised this question of corruption in the judiciary with the every judge of the constitutional court in this country on at least three occasions in writing to the constitutional court. Nothing was said, nothing was dealt with. Then in 2015, I approached the public media and I went on 702 and complained about corruption in the South African judiciary and its effect on the passing and application of acts and on the effect of the administration of those acts. And I just want to clarify that for a minute. There are three levels of government in a democracy. There is the parliament, which makes the law. There is the uh, government or executive, which administers the law. And there is the judiciary, which applies the law. Now, yesterday and today, I've heard all sorts of complaints about how the laws are not working. And they blame the government and they blame parliament. But the, the area who is obliged to apply the law is the court system, the legal system. And no one says a word about it. No one says a word about it. I have lots of information about corruption in the South African judiciary. No one wants to talk to me. And that's why I thank the panel for this short uh, uh, opportunity to talk. I want to get a bit more specific. In December 2014, the government passed an act called the um, Superior Courts Act. It is a wonderful act. It is easy to understand and easy to apply. First of all, there are areas of the courts that refuse to apply sections of this act, and I've come across it personally. Secondly, hidden at the back of the act, where no one gets to when they read it, is section 47. Now, section 47 is a word-for-word reenactment of an apartheid law which protects corrupt judges. That law, I call on the panel, don't repeal it tomorrow, repeal it yesterday. That law is preventing people from bringing corrupt judges to book. It needs to be repealed. Secondly, you look at chapter 9 of the Constitution, the Public Protector section, and in it there is a provision which says they can't consider judgments of the court. So the court can say what it likes. There is no uh, 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 responsibility in, 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 in the court system. They know they can't be attacked. Repeal that section. Repeal it. Now, the people might argue, no, you need two-thirds or whatever. Tell Parliament on a 51% vote, repeal the section in Chapter 9 under the Public Protector which says they can't look at corrupt judgments. The third part is the question of removal of judges from the bench. Now, no one knows because no one talks about it. Our Constitution says we can remove judges who are corrupt for misconduct and for incompetence and various other reasons. It's in Chapter 8 of the Constitution under a large heading called removal. Now, how do we remove a judge? A, we can't sue him because Section 47 says we can't sue him. We can't subpoena him to court to give evidence because Section 47 says we can't subpoena him to court. Let me tell you, the next step is under the removal there is a little clause which says you can only remove a judge when there's a two-thirds resolution by Parliament and, the word and appears, the Judicial Service Commission consents. Who are the Judicial Service Commission? Did you vote for them? I didn't vote for them. I voted for the government. And why should Parliament be allowed to be overruled 
by the Judicial Service Commission. What is the reason for that? In a, in a word, it's a disgrace. And that is a slap in the face of democracy. No one voted for the Judicial Service Commission. There are people on the Judicial Service Commission collaborating with judges to identify and attack individuals that they don't like. That is pure, unadulterated corruption. Mr. Panel, Mr. ANC, if you want votes in the next coming election, get rid of these sections. Now let me follow up on a little bit further uh, from my initial story where we got to the uh, being, uh, making representations uh, to, the, uh, 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 to the Constitutional Court. Subsequent to three years of doing that without any results, I then went to the Human Rights Commission and made submissions that supplied them with documentation of corruption. They came back to me and said, no, you must report it to the police. I then, and they gave me all the details of who to report it to and how. I reported it to the National Police and I have heard nothing. It is absolutely outrageous that judges have no responsibility in this country. They can make the most uh, uh, laws that absolutely do not represent South African law. I have a case over seven years with 27,000 pages and every single judgment through that case, every single judgment is not in accordance with South African law. And then our Chief Justice says, even if your judgment is wrong, you must comply with it. Absolutely not. If your judgment is wrong, tear it up. Put it in the dustbin, and if they try to come to your house to execute, fight with them. I have information that there is a cabal, a criminal cabal within the judiciary that is used to identify people and to bring them to book by reducing them to poverty. And there are people who have lost houses, lost assets. This has got to stop. And Mr. ANC, you want my vote in two years' time. Get rid of these laws. Thank you.